Let's begin then with, with the Saudi transformation story. How convinced are you, given the fact that you have the likes of Fitch, they're saying there are our execution risks when it comes to what is a very, very ambitious change? Sure. Good morning, Yusuf. Um, obviously, with any large plan like the transformation plan, execution risks are always there. Um, but we're seeing a, a commitment from the government to move ahead with a lot of these changes, which are actually quite painful changes uh, for the economy and, and for the sort of social environment in Saudi. Um, we believe that the majority of the, uh, the projects and the, and the shifts and the changes will uh, hopefully take place. Uh, obviously, some won't or will be delayed. But what we've seen is a very positive momentum, uh, which is something that's required for the Saudi economy and the GCC as a whole. So how do you play the Saudi story at the moment? How, what are you telling your clients? Sure. I mean, you've, you've mentioned some of the changes structurally in the, in the market. Uh, we're seeing an increase in trying to attract FDI into the Saudi market. So it depends who we're talking to. On the investment banking side, we believe that there will be uh, interesting opportunities for consolidation in certain sectors. Uh, we also believe that there are going to be some significant opportunities on the privatization side. Um, so those are sort of two themes that we're focused on with clients. Uh, on the public equity side, uh, again, the themes of uh, the government reducing its footprint will play into the public sector. So we're seeing interest or we're looking at uh, sectors that would uh, benefit from that move, such as healthcare, education, uh, sort of some of the sectors that the government has historically been heavy in and is trying to unwind or trying to privatize or increase the privatization. Uh, 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 participation rates on. Faisal, it's Tracy Alloway in Dubai. Uh, since you're sat there at this OPEC meeting, I have to ask, we know that Saudi Arabia has really borne the brunt of the recent production cut agreement. Uh, do you expect that it's in a good position to extend it later this year? Um, Tracy, I'm not an oil ex expert, but uh, generally speaking, I think there's a lot of buy-in from, from the key producers uh, at today's meeting. I think everyone's aligned to moving forward with the uh, initiatives that were taken uh, uh, earlier uh, or later, uh, late last year. Um, I think the jury will be out. We have to see what happens today and, and, and uh, adjust to also U.S. oil production and the increase in the shale side. And Faisal, you were also talking about the transformation of Saudi Arabia's capital markets. A centerpiece of that transformation effort has got to be the IPO of Saudi Aramco. How do you see that unfolding and how excited are you as an investor? I think, I think everyone's very excited to see that. It will be the largest IPO by any metric. Uh, but I think you know, it'll take some time for the details to be ironed out. Uh, there have been advisors, obviously, that have been uh, announced uh, on the deal, so it's moving. How it's done, when it's done, and where it's done, I think are questions that need to be clarified over the course of the next six to nine months, I believe. But we're all excited to see that happening because that will broaden the participation of the, uh, you know, the public sector in Saudi and, and FDI coming into to the Saudi market and the GCC regionally. As you look to, to the Trump administration and, of course, the latest setback around the health care policy attempts to try to reform that, how concerned are you that this could get from bad to worse in terms of the lack of progress? Sure. I think um, all, all the investors are looking at the U.S. markets and, and actually broadly uh, uh, Europe as well and, and other regions are, are bracing themselves for a round of volatility. So I think what happened with the, uh, uh, with the U.S. Healthcare Act um, is, is round one. Uh, I think the focus will be on the two T's now, uh, taxes and, and trade. Um, I think depending on what happens there, sort of the markets will react. Uh, if you look at the markets post, uh, broadly speaking, uh, uh, you know, they, were, they were somewhat down. Uh, the small caps took a, took a bigger hit. Yeah. But year to date, we're still talking about around 4.7% up on the S&P. How much wind does this take out of uh, the sales of the Trump administration in terms of the two T's, in terms of trying to pass any meaningful uh, tax reforms? I think, I think it does take some wind out of the sales, um, but I think they're going to move ahead and they've already stated that this is just a, you know, a bump in the road and they're going to continue to move ahead with their, their, their uh, key initiatives uh, over the next you know, three to six months. What about the scale uh, in terms of uh, the reforms? Do you expect them uh, to, to really be as big as, as he's often said on the campaign trail? I think that's the plan. 
Uh, uh, you, the U.S. economy is a, is a, is a, a very large economy, and, and, and changing or the direction of that is, is not as easy as, as, you know, as, as it would be for a smaller economy. I think there will be changes, the scale of which will be determined by how successful the politics are. What we have seen, unfortunately, in the, in, in the past and in the last five, six years, is things out of the control of investors dictating where markets go. So whether it's the central banks that we were, you know, we were, we were dealing with or now geopolitics, we continue to see this, this trend. And I think markets uh, tend to try to react uh, yeah. uh, to what's happening. Faisal, liquidity around the world certainly remains high, but you can't argue that uh, two pillars of the reflation trade that has marked markets since November seem to be faltering a bit. One is, of course, Trump's ability to push through his political agenda, but the other one has got to be inflation, and commodity prices are a big part of that. And if we see oil prices start to slip, that takes another leg of the reflation trade out. So how should inv investors be viewing that right now? Yeah, I agreed. I mean, we are we are looking at that. We are looking at those developments. Um, you know, the thought process was with reflation that you know uh, equities would be would be sort of the place to be. But now, given the valuations that we're seeing in markets and 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 what you what you mentioned, uh, people are looking at the asset allocations and, and and trying to adjust accordingly. Again, it's a bit too early for us to make a call on that. But you know, what we advise our investors. If they're long-term or medium-term investors, is to stick to an asset allocation that is agreed upon with them on the risk profiling, and to tweak around the edges. 